What you've been told is a lie. The schools, the higher-ups, they don't want you to know the truth. They're afraid of the guilt that comes along with the truth. Have you ever wondered how a single event can ignite a full-blown war? What if I told you Bleeding Kansas was just that kind of spark for the American Civil War? Picture this. It's the mid-19th century, and the United States is a nation divided, teetering on the brink of conflict. The Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854 is enacted, a seemingly innocuous piece of legislation that would prove to be a powder keg. This act allowed settlers to decide if Kansas would enter the Union as a free state or a slave state. This decision, placed in the hands of the settlers, led to a violent political confrontation, an era soaked in blood and conflict, aptly named Bleeding Kansas. The issue of slavery was no longer a debate but a battleground, and Kansas was at its centre. The seeds of conflict were sown, and the stage was set for a violent struggle over the future of Kansas. With the stage set, ideological clashes soon turned into bloody confrontations, but who were the major players and what were they fighting for? Enter the border ruffians, pro-slavery settlers from Missouri, who believed in the preservation of their way of life, a life intertwined with the institution of slavery. They were not alone, for on the other side of the ideological divide were the free staters. These anti-slavery settlers, saw an opportunity to shape a future where freedom was the birthright of all, regardless of color. Their battleground, Kansas. Their weapons, not just guns and knives, but words, ideas, and the belief in what America should be. Each confrontation, each act of violence, was a stark statement of their vision for the nation's future. This was not simply a fight about slavery. It was a battle for the soul of a nation, a struggle to define what America was and what it could become. In the heart of America, a miniature civil war had begun, a brutal preview of what was to come. The violence in Kansas was not without its consequences. It was a spark that ignited a much larger conflict. But how did it escalate to this point? Consider the sacking of Lawrence, where pro-slavery raiders laid waste to the free state town, an event that further stoked the fires of division. Then there was the Potawatomi massacre, a chilling revenge attack led by abolitionist John Brown, resulting in the death of five pro-slavery settlers. This brutal counterattack intensified the animosity between the two factions, pushing them further down the path of conflict. The Mare de Signes massacre, another horrifying event, saw the murder of five free state men. It was a stark reminder of the bloodshed and horror that ideological differences could manifest. Each of these events, in its own way, escalated the tension and pushed the nation closer to the edge of the precipice, the Civil War. Bleeding Kansas was a grim reminder that ideological differences can lead to devastating consequences. The dust settled, the blood dried, but the scars of Bleeding Kansas remain. What can we learn from this chapter of history? As we revisit the ashes of this battleground, we find the echoes of a nation divided. The struggle in Kansas was a microcosm of the larger conflict that was brewing a brutal clash between the advocates of freedom and the proponents of slavery. Bleeding Kansas was the fiery prelude to the Civil War, a stark reminder that ideologies can ignite wars. This turbulent period also underscored the tenacity of those who fought against the heinous institution of slavery. Their battle was not in vain. It was a step, albeit a bloody one, towards the eventual eradication of slavery. The echoes of Bleeding Kansas continue to reverberate reminding us of the high cost of freedom, the resilience of the human spirit, and the enduring quest for equality. Bleeding Kansas, a bloody battleground over the soul of a nation, reminds us that the fight for freedom often comes at a heavy price.